This is Josh Mandel with a quick demonstration of using Visual Studio Code's dev containers or development containers interface to quickly set up an environment that works uh, for building out a Fire implementation guide. Uh, I'm going to show this off using a feature called GitHub Code Spaces, uh, and I'm just going to create a new code space here. Uh, so that's running while I show you what the setup looks like. Uh, but I should know that code space is a, a paid feature of GitHub and none of this requires you to use uh, that feature. You can also do exactly the same thing running locally with VS Code on your own PC. Uh, and you can even connect to a remote Docker container that you host somewhere in the cloud. So maybe you've got um, a, a more resource rich cloud server where you want to actually host some of the compute for this work. And you've just got a very lightweight local laptop and you can connect to that cloud instance um, using just the same technique that I'll be showing you here. Um, so what I've done is to fork the HL7 Smart App Launch Implementation Guide into my own personal GitHub org. And I've done that just so I could add a dev container folder and start playing around with some of these concepts. Um, and the idea for a dev container folder is it's a convention that VS Code understands for describing the whole environment that you want or that you need to work on a given software project. And there's a couple of files in here. There's a dev container.json, which basically uh, gives this development environment a name. So that's my Fire IG Publisher environment. Tells it a set of extensions, VS Code extensions, that you want to have installed. And so in this case, I know I want a, an extension for working with Markdown, because uh, there's Markdown in a lot of IGs. I know I want an extension for working with Fish. And I know I want a REST client, which is a con convenient way to be able to poke at a server and, and see what kind of results it generates. I'm also going to give it a command to run on startup, which in this case is a static web server. And I'll show you why that is um, in a little bit, but it's just something to be able to host the built files of the IG that I'm running. Um, and then the other part of the magic here is I'm pointing to a Docker file. And this describes the whole kind of system environment, all the underlying dependencies that I need in order to work with the Fire IG publisher. So in this case, uh, I won't go through all, all the details, but this Docker file describes a Java environment. It's based on Java JDK 11. And then it installs a couple of basic utilities like Git and curl, installs GraphViz, which is a package for doing visualizations. So if that's a dependency of the Fire IG publisher. And it installs Jekyll, which is a static website generator. And that's another dependency of the Fire IG Builder. Um, so this basically gives me everything I need for the IG Builder, except for um, fish, sushi. And so I install sushi here with Node.js 16. And I also install a static web server that I'll be able to use for viewing or previewing um, all the files that we are going to be generating when we run the publisher on this IG. And so all of this is just prerequisites that give me a consistent environment with the right versions of the right dependencies. And the idea is anybody can pick up these uh, two files, the Docker file and the devcontainer.json file, just by cloning this repo. And since they're sitting right here in a dev container folder, when Visual Studio Code opens this project, it'll recognize that and it'll create the whole environment uh, to make all of these components work. Um, so my Visual Studio Code space uh, has finished launching here. And this is what I'm looking at. Uh, there's a pane on the left that shows me uh, all the files that I've checked out from the repository. And for a little bit of inception here, we can see that indeed the dev container file and the Docker file that we were just looking at are, are part of this repository. Um, so that is working as expected. But the sort of interesting part about this implementation guide is here in the input folder where we have a set of pages that make up our IG. So let's say I was doing a little bit of work on the smart app launch IG, and I really wanted to spruce up the titles or the section headings of some of these um, sections. So maybe I'm gonna add a better title here. And I wanna see what this looks like once I build it. So down here in the terminal window, I'm just gonna be able to run the standard uh, Fire IG Publisher tooling. They should be already on my path. So gen once uh, is the name of the script that should generate my output once, uh, run the publisher. Uh, and in this case, it's gonna fail because I don't have the latest publisher but it tells me what to do, which is just to update the publisher. So I'll go ahead and let that run. And once it updates the publisher, I should be able to run that Gen 1 script again. Uh, and this time it's gonna go ahead and run Sushi on the underlying um, Fire content. 
It's going to run the Fire IG Publisher after it finishes running Sushi with no errors. And this is a pretty small implementation guide, so there's not um, too much in the way of dependencies. This should um, come together pretty quickly. Now, if we look at this ports tab here, um, that's going to show me any open ports that I have uh, running. And it looks like my, my static web server didn't actually start up automatically, so I'm just going to run that myself. Um, this is not a step that I should need to do. I'll get the environment fixed uh, so that starts up automatically next time, but I should just be able to run this static um, static server.sh. Um, and with that running, I'm going to see I've got uh, this local address being hosted on port 8000. And when I open this up in the next tab, I'm going to see this version of my smart app launch IG. And if I click over here, I've got my better title all set up there and, and ready to go. And if I want, I should be able to even um, switch back over to that first terminal and do something like dash watch that's going to notice anytime I make um, changes. Uh, and so maybe in the course of my workflow, I'm now going to have an even better title than the last one. And when I save that, um, it should automatically get built and, and show up in the next tab. Um, let's also take a quick look at the extensions that are installed here, uh, because that's part of the environment setup that I mentioned earlier. And just as I showed you in that JSON file, there's three extensions that are um, pre-configured for me. One for working with Markdown, one for working with the Fire shorthand language, and one for um, general HTTP REST client um, interactions. So that sort of defines my whole environment, gives me all the tools that I need. Uh, if I come over here and reload at this stage, I might see an even better title. Um, and so it's a pretty decent workflow. I've got all these uh, components set up for me. I've got um, this auto build process running in the background and I can continue to iterate on my IG and I should be able to see uh, the results in pretty short order uh, based on that automatic builder and uh, watcher process. So that's the, that's the basic workflow. Uh, please do reach out and ask questions if you've got ideas on how to make this environment even more uh, effective or easier to use. Uh, I've got kind of a basic template in place, but would love to see this evolve over time.